Good evening and welcome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Happy Valentine's Day. Welcome to Impact Citadel Love and Relationship Month. God bless you for joining. I see some new faces. God bless you. Welcome, Sister Ayasomi. Good evening. Sister Mindy, good evening. I believe that's Sister Mindy from West Texas. Sister Ekemini, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, Brother Larry, all of you that are joining that may not be able to type in the chat. Happy Valentine's, happy Valentine's. Some people say we shouldn't celebrate it. Some people say so many things, but uh, the good thing is we get to celebrate Jesus every day. We get to talk about his love every day, whether there's Valentine or no Valentine, right? Someone give me, give me a thumbs up in the chat, Simone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Today we started a little later because it's the Valentine's edition and we wanted to prepare for that. God bless you. Uh, this month of February, we've been talking a lot about love and relationships. Um, we had a few people that asked why we're talking about love and relationship. And some people said, that's great because everybody's talking about love and relationships. And we want to know from a godly perspective, you know, what God has to say about love and relationship. And then there's other people that also said, that's worldly. You know, we shouldn't follow the world. You know, we should be different. We should do our own thing. But whatever stance you take, um, I think it's a great opportunity for us to uh, define the narrative uh, and speak life, right? And, uh, 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 and really uh, 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 
uh, really remind people and remind ourselves of how much God loves us. Amen. Thank you for the thumbs up, right? So we're not saying that after today we go and then we, 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 we forget everything about love and then we, we, we take our love cap off and say, you know what? I'm good. Now I'm ready to hate that person all over again, right? It's not a, it's not a showmanship, right? It's not just a one-time thing. I think the greatest challenge for us as believers is to not just say it, but to live it and embody it. Yesterday, uh, I had the privilege to talk about the seven dimensions of love. How many of you were on the chat? Uh, give me some notes in the chat if you remember the seven things we talked about and just some summaries. You know, maybe this kind of love was this, this was that. I also gave some scriptures to buttress the point. If you remember, put it in the chat so that people who didn't get a chance to show up will be able to catch some of the notes and make sure that you are also sharing this video with someone to be a blessing to them tonight. Regina, good evening. God bless you. Mindy, thumbs up, everyone. Uh, brother uh, Larry, Simone, let me scroll back and see if I missed anyone. So God bless you all for joining. Who remembers at least one of the seven dimensions of love we talked about, right? We talked about, uh, and I want to think there might be many, right? Um, I just found some scriptures to uh, buttress the points that we made. We talked about, uh, yes, uh, Miss Stewart said we talked about eros, which is erotic love. We, we gave some pointers from the book of Songs of Solomon when Solomon was talking about the architecture of the woman's body, her breast, her thighs, and all kinds of things in the Bible, uh, in the context of a marriage, of course, right? We talked about... Um, uh, uh, philia, um, uh, root word brotherly love, right? I talked about Philadelphia in the United States, which is one of the cities in Pennsylvania, uh, which we say is called the city of brotherly love. I was telling people that that's actually the first state I landed in when I came into the United States uh, many years ago. It was in Philadelphia I arrived, right? We talked about uh, let me see what Miss Stewart said. We talked about agape, unconditional love, right? We talked about love without conditions, love that is sacrificial, altruistic in nature. Uh, uh, someone said we talked about pragma, yes. Uh, what was that? Uh, we talked about pragma was pragmatic, the root word that forms pragmatic, enduring love. We talked about the fact that uh, a marriage relationship, yes, can have erotic love, rightfully so, uh, but for those of you that are married, I think you will agree that you are not always in an erotic moment 24 seven, right? You get up, you have a job, you have kids, you have life. Even if you don't have kids, you have other things you do. Right. And so we talked about the fact that, um, erotic love might be very heightened in the initial stages of the relationship. And hopefully that does not form the foundation of the relationship, but definitely it will be involved in some capacity for a purpose. We should not be ashamed of that. But as the love goes on, there's other things that keep that love going because you're not always going to be kissing your partner every single day, right? Uh, we talked about storgy. Uh, what was that? Uh, what was storgy? Remind me if someone remembers. Uh, uh, we talked about uh, philosophy, which is self-love. We talked about the fact that just because we're supposed to love others doesn't mean we should hate ourselves. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, love your neighbor like you like yourself. So most of the time when you treat people a certain way, it's kind of a reflection of the way you treat yourself. That's why I mentioned that people that abuse people, most of the time, they are love deficit. They really don't even love themselves. They don't believe in themselves and they take it out on other people. Because when you love yourself, you look at another human being, you can possibly do that to another human being because you value the sanctity of life. You understand, we talked about storage, which is family love, right? Um, and then uh, I think that was all we talked about, right? Today we are going to talk about um, the five love language, five love languages. There was a video we wanted to pull uh, we didn't quite get the video in time. So uh, if we have it, we'll play it. If not, we'll play it another day. Or we might have a slide or something we might show. Uh, but we're going to talk about the five love languages. Good evening, Beza and everyone that's joining. Make sure you share the link. Take a moment, just share the link right now. I'm going to share it with two people on my phone. Just share with two people. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and share with someone tonight. Tell them to join. Tell them they will be blessed and remind them to join. Tonight, we're going to talk about 
the five love languages. Someone type five love languages, five love languages. Who's heard about the five love languages? I think it's very popular, right? We've heard about it. Uh, I think it was in the year 2009. Uh, there was a, um, a therapist who I believe is also a believer, uh, a speaker named uh, Dr. Gary Chapman, who after years uh, of speaking to couples of so much research, uh, and I want to think by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, really begun to delve and get an insight into how people show love, right? How people express love, right? Um, have you ever met someone and you're like, you're so weird, right? Have you ever said that, that thing like, you're so weird. I don't, I don't see why I'm calling you, I'm texting you and that's not enough or uh, what do you want me to do, right? Have you ever had a couple or maybe in your own relationship, right? Or, and, and this doesn't even just have to do with only marriage. I want to think love language is even at the workplace, right? Sometimes the supervisor gives you um, uh, 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 a gift that just doesn't cut it. Uh, I'm a pharmacist by profession and I know there was a time in, um, there was a time in pharmacy where, um, there was a big deal about, you know, pharmacists being uh, overworked and being, you know, uh, very uh, burnt out and so many things. And um, the people were making a joke saying, you know, you work so hard and then your supervisor brings you a, a box of pizza. <laughs> How many of that experienced that? And people said, well, wh why don't we get this? And there were people that loved the pizza, right? And there was people that was like, what do you mean? What, what is, what is, what is pizza supposed to do for me? Right. Uh, so people said, give me a, a raise at the workplace. Give me a bonus. Give me, give me an extra week of vacation. Right. Give me, of course, the workplace may be different because a budget is involved and all those things, but it's even along those tangent. I see Mindy already commenting on her love language, right? Very powerful. Kemini mentioned Dr. Gary Chapman. She said, I do. So hopefully this will be an easy conversation. And for those of you that don't, we're all going to enjoy the conversation together. Okay. So um, he came up with five distinct ways that people express love to their significant others, which includes their partners, even parents. Why? Because remember yesterday, we didn't just talk about erotic love right? I know this Valentine's Day sells an erotic, passionate love that excludes everybody that's single, excludes everybody that's a single mother, excludes everybody that's a single father. But I talked about the fact that that's one dimension of love. You understand, right? And so that's why Valentine's Day must not be a time for people to feel sorrowful or compromise their body just so that they can also be part of the hype. You don't need a hype. You need true love. You need love that stands the test of time. You need love that's healthy. You need love that's going to be pragmatic. You need love that's thriving, building. You don't just need a hype that gets you emotionally worked up. And then the following day, you just come back to your place of gloom, right? We don't want that. So uh, Dr. Gary Chapman came up with the five distinct ways, right, that people sometimes express right? Love to partners, parents, children, even friends, right? Now, it's a very important aspect of life at every stage, whether you are dating, right? Uh, sometimes people say, uh, you know, I, I, I don't like the way, you know, you know, this guy does this on this day, because for me, you know, it means a lot to me when people return my calls, right? Or it means a lot to me when I, I reach out to you and you answer me. Those of you that don't, that don't answer people's text messages and, and phone calls, let's wave our hands together. Cause I know sometimes I'm really, really bad at that. Right. And so sometimes it means so much to certain people, certain things you do. And to other people, it doesn't really mean that much. I mean, granted, there are some people that are just plain ungrateful. I'm not talking about that so much. I'm talking about people who may not feel like their partners understand them because maybe the way uh, they feel loved is not being understood or being communicated properly. And this is typically a big thing in many relationships. I know for me, that was, I'm going to share stories just so people will laugh. I mean, at the time it was, it was a reason for anger for me, but today I laugh, I laugh about it. Um, 
But I remember when, <laughs> when we got married, um, I think it was Valentine's Day. And then I, <laughs> I'm even embarrassed to share this, but I'm so glad I can share it and laugh. So I didn't get anything <laughs> from my husband. Uh, in fact, when I came home from work, he had made a uh, fish. He had baked fish and he put it on the table and he put juice. And I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh, you know, when I met you, you used to love a uh, girl tilapia a lot. Um, and you love, you like Banku. Banku is uh, one of our staple meals in Ghana, where I am originally from. It's made from corn. Um, and so I was like, I mean, I, I love Banku and fish, but seriously, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to grow fish and put it on the table for me on Valentine's day. What am I supposed to do? Take pictures and be happy and like it. And, and he really thought he had done a great job. I mean, he really went out of his way. He went to Walmart, he put in the seasoning and I could feel the, sh the, the, you know, when someone feels like they really did something great for you, but then you're looking at them like, this is trash. You know, I mean, I ate the food because I was hungry, but that wasn't really what I was expecting. So it became such a big deal. I even told my pastor <laughs> about it. And then he also called the pastor and said, I don't understand her because I had to work that day. I went to Walmart. I went to buy the fish and she keeps telling me she loves this food. So to me, I thought this was great. And, and, and really he, now that I, in retrospect, he really did his best. I mean, he cleaned the table, you know, tried to make it nice. So to him, that was his way of appreciating me and you know, all that stuff. And I would never forget this. The pastor also asked me, what did you also give him on Valentine's day? And I was like, Oh my God, this pastor is so problematic. Anytime I bring a very serious issue to you, 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 you find a way to, to, to do something. This is supposed to be about me, me and me only. Of course, that was my selfishness, right? Human nature, not thinking about him, you know, and it's, it's amazing because we always think about uh, Valentine's day being the woman, the man needing to show affection to the woman or parents needing to show affection to their children, you know, but we are humans at the end of the day and we are so relational, right? Uh, uh, so we must never forget that because I think Valentine's day has been commercialized to make it look like just the man has to buy a gift for the woman. Uh, but have you ever thought of maybe your husband, also needing a gift. I mean, I know we, we teach men to be very masculine and very macho and not say anything, but I remember when we went for marriage counseling, our pastor gave a statistic and said that they did a statistic on um, a huge number of men in the U.S. This was a big study. And they asked men, you know, what was the number one thing that bothered them in the marriage or something like that? And people thought the answer would be respect. Granted, men love respect and need respect. In fact, I want to think God designed them that way. And that's why God told the woman to honor the man. But I was surprised to find out, uh, our pastor told us from the study that even the men told the people that did the study, don't tell the woman, this is, this is what we really believe. But what we really feel is that we're not loved. But if we tell the woman, you know, it's going to be funny. Imagine Pastor be coming online and telling people, I, I don't feel loved, right? People are going to look at him like, are you a sissy or what? <laughs> you know, you're going to laugh at them. But that was, the, that was the outcome from the research. Isn't that interesting, right? Uh, uh, let me go into the chat because I see it buzzing here. Someone said, we men need the gifts too, right? I'm assuming that might be your love language. Uh, someone said, dining hall monitor, hugging tilapia at the dining hall, right? That's my friend from school that knows I used to love food and I still do, but surprised that my love language in the marriage was not food in that moment, right? Uh, Mindy says, Prophet Tommy calls these act of ours, pebbles, right? Uh, very interesting, Regina, right? Very, very interesting, uh, let me see here. Simone says, I can testify to your love for Banku. We used to go out and eat a lot. Exactly. So, uh, you know, pastor called us and he said, uh, and the reason why I share this is because today is funny, but then it was a big deal. In fact, I think I didn't speak to him for a while. I was so upset. I began to tell him, I cannot believe that you're a husband and you wouldn't do this. And he was so shocked. And the funny thing is, this is what he told me. He said, Actually, it cost me more time and money to bake the fish and to set the table and do that. If I knew that you didn't really care for this so much, 
I mean, 1-800 flowers. You call, they deliver 10 bucks. You can get a huge bouquet, get some flowers. So today I told him, I said, listen, we need to save money. You know, there's inflation. There's other things we want to do right now as a family. We have kids, you know, we want to put them in, uh, change their schools. You know, there are a few things we, financial responsibilities we have as a family. So I personally told him, don't buy me flowers today, please. Let's save the money for something else. If he's online, he can testify. At 6 p.m. when I finished work, I came home <laughs> and he had bought me uh, a, a bouquet and I took out two bouquets so I can, I, can, I can virtually gift it to some people. Because I, and I told him, I said, I told you we need to save money. And he said, please, the way you behaved six years ago and went to complain to pastor that I, I, I don't like you, I, I never liked the way you made me feel. And I said, really, I'm so sorry. He said, don't worry, I know you're sorry, but please let me just buy you the flowers. If you don't like it, plant it outside, ship it to your friends, but I don't, I don't want any issue. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want any attack. I don't want, and I said, no, 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 I, I really, and I sincerely meant it. I didn't even want it. I said, let's save money. Let's do this. You know, there's something we saw. I said, let's invest in this property. Let's save every money. He said, nah, man, I know we got to invest, but I'm going to still buy you those flowers because up to date, I remember the horror of that night and I don't want any stress in my life right now. I'm growing old. I want, I want to do something with my life. And the last thing I want is the stress <laughs> of a wife. Right. So I say that to get to today's topic of the five love languages. Right. The first one, uh, um, I guess uh, I'll start off with that is words of affirmation. Someone type words of affirmation. Right. For most people, and, and if this is your love language, as we go through, please type it in the chat. And if hopefully if you invited your spouse, maybe they can see these things. Right. Because maybe they don't they don't really know your love language right? Uh, um, words of affirmation. What does that mean? Right? Words of affirmation, right? Some people like to be affirmed, right? They really want to be affirmed. They really want to be uh, 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 praised, not, not in a way that's like egotistic, not like, you know, it's, it's only about you, Beza, and nobody else, you know, N not like count, you know, pushing other people down, but they, they want a few praise. If they do something, they want a compliment. If they, in fact, I think that's my husband's love languages. Every now and then he does the dishes at home. And I remember one day I came home and he said, I've done the dishes and, oh God, forgive me. I said, so what? And he was like, what? <laughs> this was, you know, when we got married at first, I was like, what am I supposed to do? Give you an award? I mean, these are dishes. You ate from them. I ate from them. What am I supposed to do? Go online and give you a, a, a certificate of uh, 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 dish completion of <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And he was looking at me like, this girl is rude. And I was looking at him like, this guy is unrealistic. You wash the dishes. You want me to compliment you for that? Right? Like we have dishwashers. Are we supposed to thank our dishwashers for, for washing the dishes? But, but you see how that can easily become... Uh, 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 help me in the chat if this makes sense, how that can easily become a, a, a bone of contention. You know, up to date, when he does the dishes, he tells me, oh, Rahel, he, sometimes he even takes a picture and I'm like, oh gosh, still texting me about these dishes. So I've also reminded myself to say thank you for doing the dishes. To him, it means so much. To me, I mean, come on, Stephanie. It's just dishes. <laughs> up to date, I don't understand why I have to say thank you for the dishes. And up to now, he also doesn't understand why. He said to me, these flowers, first of all, when he brought them home, my daughters took them, young them, took all the roses out, threw them, and he said, yep, I knew it. But hey, I want peace, so I'm going to buy them flowers for you. I know it means a lot to you. And as, as my daughters were just ripping all the petals, he said, there, there, there goes my $40. And I was like, oh, so you didn't want to buy me the flowers? He said, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And that's the same thing for me when I also think about the dishes because I don't know why up to date I have to say thank you for doing the dishes. But to him, if you say thank you for those dishes, man, you've won his heart that night. He can buy you a ticket to Disney World that night just for that, just for saying, I appreciate you so much for doing the dishes. It means a lot to me. And not, not being fake, right? Just 
really genuinely, right? We're not, we're not trying to teach people to go and manipulate people, right? I'm not saying he bought me the flowers just because. I sincerely actually came home and said, I, I really want to thank you for being a great wife. And, and I know you like the flowers. So part of the flowers is to have world peace in this house. But it's really because I really want to buy you the flowers. You understand? So it's not a manipulative thing to just... Um, you know, Bridget, you understand what I'm saying, right? You know, and it really does keep peace in the home. And and, and I heard him on the phone telling, uh, I don't know who he was talking to, but he was talking to one of his friends. And I heard him saying, bro, this is just to keep peace in the home, you know? So I asked him, I said, who are you talking to? He said, oh, it's just me and my boys. I said, what are you telling your boys? Why are you telling your boys to keep peace in the home? He said, I got to teach the boys how to keep peace in the home. If $20 worth of flowers is, is going to keep peace in the home, keep the peace in the home, right? How many of you are with me, brothers? Keep the peace in the home. Someone type, keep the peace in the home, right? This is, this is a United Nations affair. We need peace in the world. Keep the peace in the home. Amen. Uh, but uh, our media person tells me the video I wanted us to watch is here. So he's going to take me off screen real quick. It's just a two minutes video. We're going to watch it and then we'll come back to the remaining four uh, love languages. So we've talked about the first one, which is words of affirmation. So just give me two minutes of your time. He's going to push me off camera and then we're going to watch this video. This video is not my proprietary work. It doesn't belong to me. I didn't make this video. I took it from uh, Dr. Gary Chapman's website, but I think it's a good video for us to watch. So he's going to roll the video.
Hello, 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 hello. Our apologies. Uh, we, we were just told there was no sound. Please bear with us. What we'll do is we will post the original link. Like I said, it's not my work. So this is something you can find online. So I will post the website towards the end of the session. Um, oh, perfect. He posted it in there so you can watch it. In fact, there's something on there I was going to recommend for all of you to do towards the end of the session. I'll tell you later. So just save that link in your uh, your phone or something, and then we can you can watch it after the session. So the first one is words of affirmation. That video was simply uh, uh, simulating a couple that believe they love each other, but just can't quite understand each other because the wife feels like the husband doesn't understand her when it comes to the way she feels love and vice versa. And uh, it brings uh, Dr. Gary Chapman on and you know, when he began the research and some of the things he identified between couples and the fact that it's necessary for couples to talk to each other, to ask questions, especially when you're dating, right? Uh, dating is not to mate and to fornicate, right? Dating is to collect data from people and, and ask the right questions, right? And, and, and someone might say, well, what if they lie? You can tell when people lie, right? The Holy Spirit can, can reveal people's hearts to you, right? That's why we, we, we advise so many things when it comes to dating, not, not just pray. Of course you have to pray, but you have to study this person. You have to observe them. You have to ask the right questions. You have to, uh, uh so don't just get passionate and, uh, uh, bring erotic love because erotic love can be so wild. It, it makes your senses just go out of your head. It's like, you're not thinking right? So very, very important. If you're with me, uh, give me an amen. The second love language, right? Is, uh, act of service, act of service. If you're still with me type act of service, make sure you share the link and bless someone tonight act of service. I wanted to give you a scripture about the first love uh, language, which is words of affirmation. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24, it says, the right words are like honey and they are sweet to the soul and they are even healthy for the body. I believe there's a part of the Bible that talks about uh, 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 bad words being like a knife that jabs you, right? So even when I was thinking about this love language, you know, a part of me said, I, I feel like this even shouldn't be categorized as love language. This should be common sense right? I, I don't think there's anyone in the world that wants you to yell at them, to insult them, to tell them they are foolish, to look down on them, right? I, I don't think anybody in, in a relationship wants that, right? Even the people that say, you know, I'm tough, I can take it all. I, I don't think anybody wants that, right? I love that version that was posted. That version says, gracious words are like a honeycomb. They are sweet to the soul and healing to the body, which means the right words can even heal you of hurts, the right words can, can, can help you so much, right? And so you may be wondering, why is it a big deal for me to appreciate somebody to do the dishes? Maybe those words mean a lot to them. It makes them feel like they appreciate it because the Bible says the right words are like honeycomb, right? We're not saying that if you're doing something wrong, we shall endorse you with the right words while you're going down a wrong path. But we're talking about words that affirm people right? Uh, people sometimes say to their spouse, you're so ugly. Eh? You are, you are, you are, you are, whatever it is, you know, your body is off or, or whatever it is. If someone genuinely needs to work on something about them, there's a way you can still convey the message, right? The people that advertise gyms, they don't say, uh, fat people we're here for you in the neighborhood. Nobody would be going to such a gym. They're going to, they're going to have to shut down that business. That's going to be a huge deal. It's going to go on the internet. People are going to boycott that business, right? There's a way you can still get the message across, right? And, and, and so when Bible says, love your neighbor, the way you love yourself, you have to ask yourself, will you tell yourself those things? Will you tell yourself those things yourself, right? And if you would, then that means we have to begin to investigate, uh, uh the love deficiency you have and begin to invite the love of the father because nobody's going to be able to work up love for you. Right? Exactly. Stephanie. Right. So it's very important. So I, I, I almost want to think that the right words are good for everyone, but some, for some people, it, it just may mean so much. 
if that makes sense, right? The second one is act of service. I saw Beza post that, right? What are your thoughts on act of service, right? These can be like running errands or doing tasks that make the loved one's day easier. You know, there are people that will say, hey, you know what? I know you had a long day. I'm going to pick up the grocery or I'm going to, um, whatever it is, I'm going to um, get the kids tonight and, and, and free you up or, or whatever it is, I'm going to babysit or I'm going to, you know, something that for you means so much because that thing takes all your day. It eats you up and just running that errand for that person or doing that task makes that person feel loved. It may not even be much. It may be picking up, I don't know, maybe they had an order somewhere and they, they picked it up for you right? It, 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 you know, the other day my husband had went somewhere for a meeting and I had a dress, a, a cloth I gave to a seamstress to sew a cloth for me uh, when I had a baby. And, you know, because I was postpartum, I couldn't really drive. I couldn't move around. And I, I could never get to the seamstress. She lives in North Texas in Plano. So up to date, Michael is almost one. The lady still has the cloth. <laughs> And she has the dress she made. I mean, luckily, my mom brought me some dresses from Ghana when she came. So recently, my husband went to Plano for a meeting. And I said, can you please pass by this lady's place? And when you go, here, go there, please tell her that this is my new measurement. Because I lost weight after I had the baby, right? So I've shrunk a little bit. So those measurements I gave her are different. And then you know, he was looking at me like, really? <laughs> you want me to go there and run this errand and then, and then tell her this measurement and then she's going to fix the armpit and then check the bust again and then fix the hip and then do all of that. I said, yes, please. Can you run that errand for me? Right? For someone that means a lot. For another person, they might say, well, aren't you already going towards that area? Is it not your responsibility to pick it up for me? Well, okay. Is it really his responsibility? Sure, we get it. Yeah, you're a couple. Yeah, you're already there. You need to pick it up for me. But you see, that, that language has to change. Because even if it's his responsibility, are you really going to get the better of the person if you tell them, well, it's your job to pick it up because your, your meeting is already in Plano? No. Even if my meeting was in Plano, you spoke to me that way. I probably won't be inclined to do that for you. I probably won't be inclined to do that task for you right? And, and for a lot of people, that means a lot, right? Uh, act of service, right? Uh, Beza says the little things go a long way. I know a lady that's into all these uh, little notes and stuff. I don't like them at all. I find them tacky, like putting notes and writing all those things with the script. I love the scriptures. I just don't want you to put it on little stick notes and put it in your own, your, all of your office. I don't want that. I don't want no stuff hanging around. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe because I worked in the hospital pharmacy, we never put things on the wall because of bacteria. So we have to keep a very clean room, but I just never, I'm just never into sticking stuff on the wall. All our homes we've lived in, we don't even have picture frames hanging in the home. I think it's beautiful. We just, it's just never been our thing. And the weird thing is my husband also has that sort of weirdness too. So it kind of just works out. But then sometimes I go to people's homes, they have that and it really does look cute. You know, they have all these little things and then they do like a little gift box thing. And then they, I'm not into all of that, but for some people, and then you ask them, they're like, oh, my, my husband got me this little comb that has, uh, an engravement of my puppy's little sister's ears. And I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? And they're looking at me like, what is wrong with you? Right. That's their love language, right? That's their love language. And I want to know in the chat, what are some of you guys' love language? You've heard two so far. Words of affirmation, act of service, right? Act of serving, doing tasks. We see in the Bible a lot of people that did tasks for people, helped people, right? Supported people, run errands for people. We've seen it. The Old Testament talks a lot about it, right? Sometimes people would even bless people for doing something for them, for running an errand or whatever it was, right? We saw uh, Jacob's children running an errand to Egypt to go get food, right? You, you see different examples of different act of service, people going out, even the disciples, essentially, they were doing act of service for the kingdom. Some of you are involved in ministries. You do different kinds of service for the church. Maybe you write the emails for the church. You write the blog, you, whatever it is, but you're demon and the kingdom is all about service, so you see all these things embody the love that Jesus Christ showed for us. The third thing is receiving gift. 
And I'll tell you uh, 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 a revelation I got after I, I was studying this love language thing. Receiving gift. I think this is self-explanatory. All the gift people, give me a high five in the chat, right? This could be gift of any size. They don't even necessarily have to be a house. It doesn't have to be a car. There's somebody that probably posted on Instagram today that their husband bought them a car. And then there's somebody that got some antique thing from some shop, you know, some, some pendant or some random thing that if you were to post online, people would be like, what? you know, people might even compare the one that got a car to the one that got, you know, an earring, but Hey, that's, it's, that's why this commercialization thing doesn't have to move you tonight because just because there are people that didn't post anything online, it doesn't mean that their husbands didn't show them love. No, someone's might be that goldfish tonight, <laughs> right? And they ate it. They enjoyed the dinner. They move on. They move on. I'm not here to bash somebody that posted something or somebody that didn't post anything, right? I know we're in a very digital space and people are inclined in different ways. But the point is just because your love language might be a car and someone's love language might be those words of affirmation. I mean, what are you going to do with words of affirmation? Record your husband saying he loves you and put it online. So you have to understand you and your relationship right? And, and make sure that you are aligned so that you are not trying to live someone else's relationship in your own home. Very important. These gifts could be different gifts, right? And sometimes it's not even so much the gift. It's the way you plan the gift, right? The way the receiver feels when they get the gift, right? Uh, uh, it, it makes them feel some way. Even when you're not around, they look at the gift and they are like, ah, oh, I remember that fateful day when I walked in the room and they turn on the light and oh my goodness, that, that, that earring that I had always wanted from Target and my husband just had it there. To them, it means so much. Long after time is gone, they still remember that gift, right? It means so, so much to them. So much to them, right? As a matter of fact, I tell you another joke. Um, what are these? Are they called daffodils or something? Or uh, maybe Pastor B can help me in the chat. Every Valentine's Day, he's giving me these, these flowers. And Pastor, let me put you on the spot, please. I actually don't know why he gives me these flowers, but now I know why. He told me a couple years ago in New York. And he, it even comes in a vase. So when he gave it to me once some years ago, I was like, orchids, thank you. I was like, seriously, you're going to give me a, a flower pot? This is what he told me. He said, these roses that like these individual roses, they tend to wither so quickly. And even when you put them in like a, a vase, sometimes they wither. But then I feel like these orchids, you can always put them at your, um, what do you call them? A window pane. You can, you can put them, you know, you can, you can water them and they, they tend to last a little longer. They don't, uh, yeah, Samoa says they don't die easily. And to him, he said, the reason why I choose to buy you that is because I feel like it will last longer. And anytime you look at it, hopefully you can remember me and hopefully you can think about my proposal. <laughs> so you see, that was his way. And I was caught up in this commercialization of roses are red and something is blue and something is pink. And if you love me, do me and all these nonsense, you see. And, and, and truth be told, the roses are already withering. And these orchids will probably be here for another two or three weeks if my daughters don't destroy it. You know, uh, Mindy says, we're very picky. I'm telling you, because low-key, I still, I still want them roses, even though I love, the, I love the thought process for the orchids, you know. So I, I'm just using these examples not to, uh, I'm not saying your husband has to buy your orchids tonight. Please don't go stress him. That's not my point. I'm not here to... Uh, uh, put on somebody that my husband got me this and your husband didn't give me. That's not my point. I'm making a bigger point here and I hope we catch the examples I'm trying to make here so that we get the main point, the main message out of what I'm saying. It's not so much, you know, all of these things, right? Tomorrow is going to come. We're going to move on and eat fish or whatever we got to do, right? <laughs> you know, so think about the, 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 the meat of the message, right? The meat of the message. That's what's important. And, and, I, and I put in this joke too. He told me uh, some many years ago, he said, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, he's, he's, he's into real estate. And he told me there are seasons for real estate. There are times when real estate is very good and there are seasons where real estate is very low. 
So he said, um, I plan financially for the year. Like during the summertime, people buy a lot of homes. But during the wintertime, because it's cold, you don't see that move a lot. Of course, right now, the economy has changed. This was a while ago. So he told me the reason why I do this is because I plan my finances. And so I'm not about to get you these roses that I have to buy every two days or whatever it is. I'm trying to get you these orchards so they can last some months while I figure out my next financial move, you know? So I know it's funny, but there's so much that goes into it. So if you don't understand these things, you'll be upset with your spouse prematurely. You know, you see the thought process, but then he also was trying to understand how I also feel about these things. And he wanted to really know, why do you like roses? Is it because Instagram talks about it or because you really love roses? Is it because you just want to also have something so you can take a picture and put online? What is really, what really moves you? Because for all you know, maybe it's not a roses. Maybe it's words of affirmation. But you've never received words of affirmation, so you're trying to now force a guy to do all these things to make you feel loved. And granted, you could have one or two of the love languages, right? Uh, someone said in the chat, the motive behind the gift even makes it possible for us to understand the essence of the love language. Powerful. Stephanie says, when it comes to the gift, social media is playing a big role to those who focus a lot on what people post. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right, because the day he made that fish, imagine I went online and said, everybody's husband is buying them flowers. And then here's this guy that makes me fish, right? That probably would have put him off and, and probably weakened his confidence because he would have thought, oh my goodness, did I make a fool out of myself or what? Because I really thought this girl loves the fish and I ate the fish too. So he was like, girl, you're greedy. You ate the food, took the flowers too. And you're telling me that's not your love language, right? So we have to understand the ramifications of these things, right? So we talked about words of affirmation. We talked about act of service. We talked about receiving gift. The fourth one is quality time. Where are my quality time people? Quality time. Someone type quality time. I have a very good friend. Yesterday I saw her online. She had posted and she said, uh, she sent me a message. She said, having quality. She hasn't texted me in a while, first of all. So I was like, girl, what's with you? I haven't heard from you. What's going on? You okay or what? Like, is the marriage good or what? She's like, girl, it's so good. I said, really? She said, girl, my mother-in-law used to live with us and I could never get time with my husband because every time she's in the kitchen, she, I love her, but she's always, you know, my son, my son, my son. And she's a good mother-in-law. She's not a bad person or anything. And she said, but for me, I love to spend time with my husband. That's what she told me. She said, I just love to spend time with my husband. And I feel like I could not get time to spend with him. That's what she told me. Samuel, is that your love language too, right? Oh, Larry said, yes. Well, we know it's yes, because last time we found out you were burning with passion and you couldn't wait to get married. Uh, Rebecca. So a lot of people's love language is quality time. Hey, Larry said, no distraction. That means when you get married, we're not going to get no flyers. eh? You have to make us our flyers one year ahead of time. <laughs> right? Simone says, that's me right there. Rebecca, I thought you were praying, oh, I didn't know you were waiting for quality time, right? About five people answered to quality time, right? Even Jesus, remember in the book of uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says early in the morning, he will wake up and go have uh, time with his father. And that's why, in fact, when I was, I was telling my husband, I said, do we really need to teach people about love languages? Because I feel like this is a part of the human life. This is, the Bible talks about it in so many ways. It's already embodied in so many ways. Do we really have to tell people this is a love language? Because I feel like the Bible expresses these things, right? The Bible says very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went to a quiet, one version says a quiet place. Another version says a solitary place and spent time with the father. You know, some of us are saying we want quality time with our husbands, but we ain't making no quality time for the Lord. We ain't making no time for prayer. We ain't making no time to study the word. We are making no time. And yesterday I talked about the fact that marriage is an expression of the Trinity. And that covenant of marriage is the closest covenant to how Jesus Christ loves the church. So if you try to do marriage independently of the person that instituted that marriage, you are going to run that marriage on hype, on your own wisdom, on whatever it is, but you realize the foundation is not there. And when trouble comes, 
it comes crumbling because the foundation of the marriage is not the flowers. It's not the quality time so much. Those are expressions of a foundation that has already been built because we're human. So we don't just have a spirit. We have a body. We have a soul, right? So yes, the marriage has a spiritual foundation, but hey, it's two human beings. We have a body. We burn with passion. We love each other. We want to touch. We want to kiss. We have a soul. We have things that evoke feelings in us. We have things that make us angry. We have things that make us happy. So the love languages are expressions of things in the soulish realm. This has nothing to do with spirituality in some way, I think, right? So, but we have to address the spirit, the soul, and the body. That's why Songs of Solomon was talking about the body. He talked about the, the lady's breast and everything. But we've also, many times, those of you that follow us know we've talked about praying about your marriage and, and laying the right foundations and, and stuff. So we've addressed the spiritual stuff. We've addressed, think, uh, and I think Pastor B is going to address sex and a few things too later on in the week, but we're also addressing things that pertain to the soul, right? So four things so far, right? Uh, 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 number one, words of affirmation. Number two, act of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Number four, quality time, right? undivided attention. For those of you that are married, can you imagine your spouse having sex with you and then online like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me check. Let me check this girl's picture real quick. Let me, let me see what this, this guy posted on Facebook real quick. You're going to be so upset. You're going to be like, you don't cherish me. Right. And that's what we do in prayer sometimes. Right. We're praying and we're like, okay, pastor, I know you're praying, but hold on, hold on. Because I just heard this girl got engaged and I, I got to see the ring. I, I really got to see the ring right now, Pastor. Just hold on for me, Jesus. Let me just, let me see the stone on the ring right there. Right? How would you feel if somebody did that to you? I know one of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm talking to somebody, especially people come to our home. And there, there was someone that used to come here and do that. And it, it would just irk the everything out of me. You, you have invested your time to speak to this person. And they're just on their phone. It's like they don't even respect the time you're giving them. They're just out of it. They're, just, they're probably even having a full-blown conversation with someone else. And I'm like, why am I even here right now spending my time with you? Why am I even doing that? Because clearly you either don't respect my time. Maybe I need to charge you for my time. Maybe you're going to respect me. Because you have my free time, you have my attention, you take it for granted. Why do people go see counselors and pay? Most of the time, these counselors are even talking about junk. What you're buying is not just the experience, you're also buying their time. You're buying their time. People sell courses. What they're saying is, it took me time to put this together. It took me time to put this material together, right? It took me time. Imagine you go to your pastor, he's counseling you, but you ain't listening. Your mind is somewhere, you know, it, it, it's very insulting. So that's why I even think this love language thing to me, I don't call it love language. I think it's just common sense. You imagine you're in your, your boss's office. He's talking to you and then you are on LinkedIn applying for another job. I'm not saying you can apply for another job, but really when we're in that meeting, you understand. And that can be a put up for a lot of people. Right? Can I, can I have some honest people? It can be a real put off for a lot of people, especially in this social media world. We are all on our phones. It, it can re really be a huge put off, right? Sometimes I'm online, I'm going live and someone is like, Hey girl, uh, my church, uh, is doing this, this thing. I want to share this. And I'm like, if you really care for me and you know what I'm about, you should know I'm even live right now. It's already enough that you don't even want to come and support what I'm doing. But seriously, and they're trying to, and they're like, girl, girl, are you there? Girl, girl. Now, it's different when someone doesn't know your schedule. They live in a different part of the world. I'm not saying if you text me while I'm live, you've sinned. That's not the point. But you, you get what I'm saying. It's because in a marriage relationship, the person knows your schedule. They know your life. They know these things. Mindy says, Mindy says yes, no phones during meals at our home. Wow. That's beautiful. She said, in my home, during meal, we don't do phones. Y'all put your phones down. We eat. After we eat, we get on our phones. And I, 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 I'm not that old enough to know what our fathers used to do, but they used to tell us. And I want to think, I actually remember when my parents, uh, when I lived with my parents, we actually used to eat together at the dining table. 
Uh, and it's funny because we are married and we just we just throw our legs on the ottoman and just munch on something and just be be chatting our lives away, right? And 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 people have been saying that this this phone stuff is gonna really be a problem at some point, right? Uh, uh, let me read some of the comments in the chat. Larry says, ideally, it is imperative for it to be part of Christian life naturally, right? Uh, just like when Jesus was with the boys at the supper table. Right. If we fully follow the word of God, but we like the knowledge because we focus on what the world is doing. Right. Because what you're really telling that person is, I love you. But right now, it's very important that I look at the newest rink on Facebook. Right. And sometimes you may not even mean it that way, but that's what you're telling the person indirectly. Right. And to some people, that is an absolute put off. Right. So quality time being intentional in each other's presence with undivided attention, undivided attention, right? Even for leaders and pastors and ministers, they are just sometimes, hey, they're probably spending time with their families. You know how sometimes even your boss, you send the boss an email and the boss says, uh, uh, it's after hours, I'll reply the email tomorrow, right? I know it sounds rude, but what they're saying is because the love language is not just between a man and a woman, I, I hate the fact that we've limited this love thing to just man and woman. It, it's relationships, friends, family, employer, employee, so many things. What are they saying? There's a time for everything. I think it was Songs of Solomon that says that um, I have ignored my garden and tended to another person's garden. Uh, uh, I, I believe it might be in the book of Solomon's chapters. Um, I, I'll try and find the scripture. It says something like, I have ignored my own vineyard. I think Songs of Solomon chapter one, verse six. He says, I have neglected my own vineyard, right? And, and he was talking to neglecting as in the person you're supposed to take care of. Larry, see if you can post that scripture. I don't know if it's correct. I think it's Songs of Solomon, either one, verse six, or, or um, see if you can help me, right? He, he said, the, the responsibility I should have for tending my vineyard I have neglected that responsibility and I am, and I am somewhere else. I am somewhere else. Right. And she said in songs of Solomon that I didn't take responsibility for neglecting my vineyard. Right. Some of us think neglecting our vineyard makes it look like we are, because most of us have a savior complex. We feel like we should go out there and save the whole world. Right. I think it's Songs of Solomon chapters one, verse six. It says, I have neglected my own vineyard. You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to do that. Someone said in the chat, people are married to each other by ceremony, but have channeled their marriage to their phones now. Wow, Lord have mercy, right? Samoa says, Sunday dinner, we eat around the table. Speaking of tables, we haven't had furniture in a long time because our life has always involved relocation. We've relocated in the last few years, like maybe three or four times. So the other day we got, we finally got some furniture and my husband made a joke and said, finally, we can sit at the dining table and eat together. We have another dining table, but it's not really a functional table. And, and, and it sounded like a joke, but what he's saying is that we, we need to be intentional about these things, right? He even told me, he said, if we, if we do this, we will teach our daughters to, cause we notice the girls just get up and they're running around and they have their plates. They have the chicken nugget in one hand, the fries in one hand, then they're running all over the place. And I said, why do they do that? Because at school they sit. My husband said, well, when they come home, we don't sit with them at the table. So that's why they, they're watching the mother and the father who are, they have chicken in one hand, going upstairs, fried rice in another hand in the backyard. So they're, they're watching us. Very important, right? Beza said, after 6 p.m., I limit my phone and use it to dedicate time to my kids and my husband. I see why Beza doesn't respond to me after 6 Thank you for the answer. I'm just teasing, right? But our time is fast spent, so I'm going to go to the last uh, uh, act of uh, love language and we'll wrap up for the night. Oh, Mindy posted the scripture. Thank you. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6. She said, do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has turned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. I have not kept my own vineyard. I am out there, I have burdened myself with work, with life, with everything else, but neglected my own vineyard, right? That is why I believe that Paul said the qualifications of a bishop is that he himself must be taking care of his own home. How are you going to help somebody else fix their marriage? You ain't even fix your own self, 
right? And, and, and it's not a one-day fix. We have to constantly, every time a husband says, we cannot get complacent in our marriage. We can't get complacent thinking we know each other. Life comes up with so many things. We have to constantly be intentional about loving each other, about respecting each other, about growing, about maturing. We have to be intentional about prayer. He said, we have a time we always pray. He said, I want to bring a second time. I said, eh, we already have one time we pray. You want to make it twice? He said, we have to be intentional about this thing. You can't just sit there and think it's okay. We, we, we're growing. We can't get, comp especially if we want to grow and mature and do all these things, it's going to take a little more, right? You cannot neglect your own vineyard. Very, very important. Another version says, my brothers ridiculed and sent me to the work in the fields, right? Thank you for, for posting that. So very important. The last love language is physical touch. All the physical people give me a shout in the chat. Physical touch. This could include contact, right? But physical touch is not always um, sex or sexual intercourse. In fact, um, I've, I'll share this joke and we'll wrap up. My husband says when it comes to physical touch, his physical touch leads to the highest level of touch. To me, the kind of physical touch I want is the touch where you just hug me, but you don't do anything else to me. He told me, woman, I don't roll that way. <laughs> if I touch you, I got to touch you all the way. I got to baptize you in that touch. I got to immerse you in that touch. I got to go all the way in that touch. And I said, please, I don't, I don't want that kind of touch. Just, just hug me, just stroke my arm and just... And, but don't, 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 DOV says, I know she, he, he told me, I don't, I don't work that way. I don't function that way. But you see, so touch is in different ways, right? Uh, I think Pastor will talk about maybe sex later, talking about foreplay, talking about touch, talking about, you know, uh, sometimes people feel like they're used in touch. It's like, I just come touch you and just walk away. Right? So when we talk about physical touch, we're not saying, okay, I just touch your cheeks. No, come on. You, you understand what I mean, right? Sometimes it's even holding hands, sometimes hugging, even sometimes massage. I have a friend that told me that her husband massages her legs. I'm like, girl, I saw your toenails the other day. This man is massaging those toenails. And she said for her, the husband finds pleasure in doing it. She finds pleasure and it's so beautiful. And definitely touch can lead to other things because in the context of a marriage, sexual intercourse has a place right? It doesn't necessarily have to, but for some people, it means a lot. Maybe stroking somebody while on the couch watching a movie, right? So touch can be in so many ways, but would you agree with me that this doesn't even have to be compartmentalized? We don't have to say, okay, uh, Mindy's love language is words of affirmation, but she doesn't care for touch, right? It may not be her primary love language, but it doesn't mean that if her husband touched her, she's going to say, get out of my face. Right. Pastor Obi says she, ha he has a question. I, I don't think they can like hear you. Three different, they, can hear. they can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Can someone have like three or four different Pastor Obi's languages? question is, can someone have three or four different language? Let me have some thoughts in the chat. What do you guys think? Can someone have three or four different language or all of them? Right. DOV says the touching is what ends up with many babies. <laughs> Exactly. That was what I was trying to avoid saying. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, the question is, can someone have uh, three or four of these love languages? What are your thoughts? Mindy said, yes. Uh, Pastor B said, all of them. Simone says, yes, I think so. And I think it changes with time. Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Simone says, love evolves. People evolve. People change. Sometimes, right? Sometimes you get to know people. Life change. Circumstances change. That's very powerful. You know, people that are very static in the way they get to know people is a problem. You know, because you say, well, when I met you, you were like this. Yeah, but I'm not like that no more. Girl, I have stretch marks on my belly. Huh? When you met me, I had a nice tummy. Now I have all these stretch marks. So what are stretch marks got to do? I got stretch marks. That's your fault. <laughs> He's asking me what stretch mask got to do. That means my body has changed, right? So he said, if, if there's stretch marks on your stomach and it bothers you, you let your husband touch other places. 
right? Stephanie said, Pastor, the answer to your question is that, yes, some of us are multilingual. <laughs> exactly. We have people that are multilingual. I love that, right? Uh, uh, and and Pastobi says that, as for him, uh, Dr. Gary Chapman's uh, uh, love language doesn't work for him. I said, why? He said, I only have one love language. I said, what is it? He said, my love language is money. I said, really? He said his love language is not act of service. It's none of that. His new love language is money. All he wants is money. So for those of you who have come up with a new love language uh, of money, uh, I pray that uh, God will bless you with a good job, bless you with streams of income, and bless you with an opportunity to make a lot of money in Jesus' name. Larry said money can boost love. Seriously. I think we would all agree, right? These flowers cost money, right? Or did you get it for free? Did you get the flowers for free? It's not free. <laughs> so, so Pastor B says the reason why his love language is, is money is because money answers all things. And he says he believes money stops nonsense. So God must bless you financially. Amen. Beza says it will become second nature. You start to do it without even recognizing that too. That's a powerful statement. That and what Simone said about changing and evolving. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, Beza says, look at the weight we've put on for these kids, right? Uh, uh, I hope this, these teachings helped us tonight. I hope these teach, teachings helped us tonight. Uh, I wish I could, I could share one of these flower stalks with someone that feels like my love language is gift and nobody gave me gift. Well, guess what? I have a, I have a lovely rose for you. Yes, I think it was last two years we shipped roses to people. I think we should have done it this oh, year. But if there is, Bridget says money is vitamin M. It's vitamin a very, M. very good love language. They forgot one vitamin. Yes, vitamin M, right? So that he says, so those of you, Whose love language is money? I guess that still comes to gift, right? But Pastor says, no, he's not going to clarify it under gift. It's a special type of, 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 of love language. Amen. Uh, but we thank God. And, and I know that Valentine's Day can be uh, a sort of way for people, right? People may be like, you know what? I get it. The teaching was great. But I still feel lonely. I still feel like nobody gave me a gift. You got a flower. I didn't get a flower. That's not the purpose of my teaching. We have the gift of fellowship. We have the gift of Jesus. And I believe it's God's will to give everybody a good marriage, a good relationship. I'm not saying it just to make you happy. I believe it in the Bible very much. I, I'm not an expert in the Bible, but the little things I've read about the Bible, I think God's for us, God's thoughts for us are good and not of evil. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God has a good thought for us to bring us to an expected end. I don't think that God wants you to be sad, wants you to be in a bad marriage, wants you to be abused. I think that God wants, if flowers is what you want, come on, God gave you Jesus Christ. You think it's a problem for him to buy you a $20 rose? to get you a guy that's going to give you this, he's going to do that and more, right? He's going to put you in a thriving relationship, a healthy home, or even if you're a parent, a healthy relationship with your children it, or, or the workplace, right? I believe that God is going to give us these things and we will glorify him with our relationship because our marriage is a weapon. I'm telling you, it's a weapon. So I pray that tonight, if you feel some type of way, because everybody's online, flaunting the flowers, and here's Rahel online talking about roses, trust me, don't be moved by this thing. Be moved by the authentic love that God has shown for you through his son, Jesus, and the kind of relationship that God is about to bless you with because you have trusted in him, you have believed in him, and you have honored his word, and he's also going to honor you in every area of your life in Jesus' name. I pray that we will celebrate many great marriages. I pray that many relationships that may be uh, not, not quite the best tonight for whatever reason, I pray that understanding the peace of God, the love of God will come into those homes in the name of Jesus. Sincerely, the love and the peace in the home means more to me than flowers. I don't want to get flowers and then I'm being abused. I don't want to get flowers and inwardly I'm not happy. So I want us to go for the intangibles that mean more for us and every other thing will follow. I pray the Lord will bless us and bless our relationships in Jesus' name. Uh, God bless you, Beza. Thank you uh, in response to your comment. Uh, Larry says the gift of the word. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, this is uh, my channel, the Dr. Rahel channel. But we're trying to move all our meetings from my channel to the official 
Impact Citadel channel. So do me a favor, click the Impact Citadel YouTube link and subscribe to that link because that is the official ministry channel. I happened to have a YouTube channel many years ago, so I kind of kept it for the Woman of the Bible series. But as we are building Impact Citadel, we want to run all our meetings through the official ministry channel. We'll still run them on both channels, depending on the type of program we're having. But do me a favor, like and subscribe to the videos in a digital space as you like the video it populates the video and shares it with other people it's almost like the equivalent of inviting someone to church so make sure you subscribe to our channel the link is in the chat and i would also want to give everybody homework please don't log off that website larry posted larry please post it there is a test you can do on gary chapman's website to test your love language. Some of you might be wondering what your love language is, whether it's one, whether it's two, or a mixture. So he has a little quiz on his website. Try and take that quiz with your husband, your, your fiance, your spouse, whoever you're talking to tonight. Click on it, and I think it's called the love language quiz. When you scroll to the bottom, I don't get anything from this website. I don't know Dr. Gary Chapman. I would be honored to know him. He doesn't know me. I don't get any commission from anything. I just found it as a great resource. And I wanted to share with you, uh, we have a lot of resources coming up as a ministry as well. But while we are working on that, I didn't want to deny you of an opportunity to delve into this great resource to help you. So try and take the quiz. And tomorrow we will ask everybody what their love language was when they took the quiz, if you feel to share your love language. So God bless you. Uh, we'll share prayer. Uh, I don't know if Pastor, you want to pray for us. Um, uh, he says, he says he's taking care of the baby and that's his love language to help me. <laughs> All right. So let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for, uh, the things we got to learn, uh, Lord, uh, even in this time of fellowship, uh, we just want to pray tonight for every person, every relationship, whether it be a parent's child relationship, whether it be an employer employee relationship, whether it be a marriage relationship or a dating stage or whatever it is, Lord, I pray that you will give us wisdom to maneuver our relationships in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will bless our relationship. I pray that for any relationship that might be on the rocks tonight, for whatever reason, any heart that might be genuinely hurt. Lord, I pray for the healing uh, that comes from the Holy Spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. For people that feel like they hate this day because it reminds them of how they feel like they made a bad decision about a certain spouse or whatever it is. Lord, I pray your healing and I pray that the next time this season comes around, uh, not because we're waiting for this season to love, but the next time this season comes around with all its pressures, we will remember uh, how you uh, put the lonely in families, how you restored us. Uh, and even every single day of our lives, even from now, we don't even have to wait for 2024. Even now in the name of Jesus, I pray your peace. I pray your love for every home, for every family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. This is my rose to you. Mwah. Happy Mwah. Valentine's day. We love you. God bless you. We'll meet God willing tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. Enjoy your family, your friends, your guardians, your parents, your, your everything. And we will meet tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today I've heard your message. And I know you are the only way to the truth. No one goes to the Father except through you. Ready to pick up my cross and follow you. Lord, forgive me of all, all my sins. I accept you as my mother and personal savior. From today, write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. In Jesus' name, Amen.